How is this COVID-19 working out for you? Well, it's roughed us up pretty good this year, but the real test is going to be next year, 2021. But enough about bad news, let's have some fun. Today I'm heading over to what I hope is a great memory for you. Hanna Barbera Studios. Yes, it's the old studios where they made all those great cartoons. I'll get into the details of each cartoon in just a little bit. But first, I'd like to welcome you to my video on Hanna Barbera Studios. I hope you have become a subscriber, and if you have, thank you for the support. And if you haven't become a subscriber, shame on you! But you can support my channel well, simply yes. by clicking yes, the thumbs you can. up and click on that bell for future videos. Thank you. It's quickly coming up on the left here, but before we go there, I'd like to take you through the valley. There's some other points of interest along the way. And once we leave Hanna-Barbera Studios, we're going to take a trip over to where they keep the masters. So let's back up and start there. I'll briefly give you some information on some of the points of interest along the way as we approach Hanna-Barbera. We're traveling east on Burbank Boulevard in the city of Valley Glen. This is where KFWB radio station celebrated a 90th anniversary on March 4th, 2015, although the station made no mention of this historic event. It was once Warner Brothers from 1925 to 1950. Then in 1966, KFWB was purchased by Westinghouse Broadcasting, later turned its branding to La Mara Mara, 980 Regional Mexican. Beginning in the 70s, increased population and price of gasoline led to calls for mass transit. This is one of the entrances to our subway system. It's called the Red Line and this is the North Hollywood Station. This is our first train station. The tracks would be right out front. They'd head east, which means they'd be coming right at us. A little of its history. Here represents North Hollywood's first beginnings, a 119-year-old North Hollywood train depot. Of course, it's been renovated as a coffee shop. At 119 years old, now there is some history. Okay, we're gonna continue south on Lancashire Boulevard and we're coming up to our next little exhibit. Back there is the Academy of Television Park. It is the home of the Television Academy where a 27-foot Emmy Award statue commands its courtyard. Another historical site, Phil's Diner, at its original location, 1138 Chandler Boulevard, and it is the oldest dining car in California. It is believed to have been built in 1926 by Phillips Company. It was later moved to 5230 Lancashire Boulevard in North Hollywood. Unfortunately, someone stole the original neon sign prior to its relocation. Continuing south down Lancashire Boulevard in North Hollywood, we are about halfway to our destination. We're coming up on... Idle Hours, established in 1941, resembled a whiskey barrel to lure thirsty workers in on their idle hours. Buildings like this were called programmatic architecture, bloomed alongside the automobile in the early 1940s as Californian residents and visitors began driving down the boulevards instead of walking. It was reintroduced to North Hollywood. The building achieved landmark status as Los Angeles Historic Cultural Monument number 977 in 2010. Hey, anyone in the valley recognize this? After 36 years, Odyssey Video, a popular store, out of business. There are a lot of sad clients who have posted on Yelp about this store's close. St. Charles Church. Dolores Hope would attend here. Her husband, Bob Hope, would say of his wife, Dolores, my wife Dolores does enough praying to take care of the both of us. However, eventually Dolores' prayers were answered and Bob Hope was baptized into the church. A 
up ahead there is the bridge that goes from the red line of Universal Studios over to Universal Studios. Check it out. There's the entrance driveway up to the Universal Studios. Okay, we're almost at our destination. We're going to make a left and we're just about a mile away. I hope you enjoyed some of the history of the San Fernando Valley along the way. Though the building has architectural significance, let's talk a little bit about the cartoons that they put out. And although I won't be able to talk about every cartoon, I'm going to stick with some of the more popular ones. The Yogi Bear Show debuted on January 30th, 1961 and ran for 33 episodes up until January 6th, 1962 and included two segments of Snagglepuss and Yaki Doodle. <laughs> in this photograph, when the building was brand new, look in the lower right corner, you can see that small structure. That's where the security guard stood and that was at the parking lot. The structure was saved but moved in front of the B building. And the design of it was to emulate the Jetsons look. Architect Arthur Froelich, who was best known for his racetrack and supermarket designs, designed the new Hanna-Barbera studio with matching buildings in a clean mid-century modern style. They are horizontally orientated with flat roofs and dramatic perforated concrete screens. I like this Asian touch. It goes well with the perforated screens. There is some real creative design and work done on this building. much like Hanna-Barbera's creative devices in their cartoons. To the far right of the building, there's a hallway, and we're going to go through that hallway. It's going to lead us to the back of the building. The clean, simple, yet effective lines continue even in the back of the building. Remember when the sun just started to shine in on a Saturday morning and you'd sit in front of your TV? Well, this is where all that magic started. Frolic, who died October 5th, 1985, leaves his wife Dorothy, a son Bruce, a daughter Linda of Los Angeles, and four grandchildren. The services were private and the family requested that instead of flowers, contributions be made for cancer research and to the Cedar sinai Medical Center. Hey, it looks like Dino Tracks! <laughs> yes, it's Dino Tracks alright, but it's just tracks showing you the direction to the undercar garage for the apartment building in the back. This Judy Garland mural is across the street and I thought I'd show it just before we go to the other half of our destination. And unlike the fantasy of cartoons, driving in Los Angeles can be a dramatic reality. Okay, as we leave Studio City, heading west down Ventura Boulevard, there you'll see the old Frank Zappa recording studio. Pins Bowling Center, with a Z, is where Cher, as a teen, used to hang out. As you can see, driving in LA is an obstacle course. Hanna-Barbera was founded July 7, 1957 by William Hanna, Joseph Barbera, and George Sidney. Tom and Jerry were their first success, which they worked on from 1939 to 1957. Okay, we're going to turn right on Sepulveda going north. We are approaching our second 
destination, which is the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Hanna-Barbera's greatest success was the Flintstones, which ran six years from 1960 and had 166 episodes. That has been succeeded only by The Simpsons, which, by the way, to produce just one episode of The Simpsons takes six months to complete. The Flintstones was somewhat of a take or a parody of The Honeymooners. Jackie Gleason thought of suing, but Gleason didn't want to be remembered as the man that killed Fred Flintstone. Wise choice. And isn't it better to embrace imitation is the best form of flattery? Hanna-Barbera made no secret that some of its characters were based on other sources. Yogi Bear was based on Ed Norton. Tomcat was based on Sergeant Bilko. We are at Sherman Oaks Galleria at Sepulveda and Ventura Boulevard. The cartoon characters are drawn on clear film, and this is where they have safely stored them. Now I was told if you call ahead, you can get a short tour. However, due to the coronavirus, no one was around to take my call, which is a shame because there were so many cartoons they had put together. In a moment, you're going to see the outer part of that building while I talk about some of the more popular cartoons. Let's face it, any popular idea or invention is going to be copied or reinterpreted. The Honeymooners along with I Love Lucy particularly invented the sitcom genre. Countless programs are inspired by their work and so we benefit with a wealth of choices and altered and expanded ideas. Hanna-Barbera's next success was Sinbad Jr. and his Magic Belt, which ran from 1965 for one year with 102 episodes. I watched this one as a kid myself, but forgot about its existence until I researched for this video. All I recall is Sinbad would pull on his belt and grow tremendous muscles. Now looking back at this, I'd say this was very suggestive. <laughs> Although they had a large variety of shows, just too many to talk about here, another great success and one of my favorites was The Jetsons. This originally ran from 1962 for one year with only 75 episodes. A few more were produced in 1985 as part of the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera. The humor was top-notch with poor George Jetson dealing with his psycho-manipulating boss. George could always go home and feel in control there, but he never was, and never seemed to know it. And speaking of the Jetsons, let's talk about the Flintstones. Despite the high number of episodes of other shows giving the illusion they were the best, in my mind there was never a show any greater than Johnny Quest. I call it the first five finger cartoon. Johnny Quest ran from 1964 to 1965 with only 26 episodes. Johnny Quest had a far more real effect to it. Artists at its best and storytelling shows with depth put into it. It's often believed that shows with drinking, smoking, or natural misdeeds of mischief will lead a child down the same path, but the adventures were solid with a positive message. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I also hope you'll subscribe by clicking on that old subscribe button and click on that bell to receive notices of further videos. Or you'll be in the doghouse. And I'll see you in the next one.